Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Chang, Vice President of Content for The Trust, the custom studio at The Wall Street Journal. Welcome to what I'm sure will be an insightful discussion around artificial intelligence, how its applications are transforming the transportation and logistics sector, and why other leaders in other industries should learn from it. Joining me today are Sherry Sanger, Executive Vice President of Strategy and Marketing for Penske Transportation Solutions, and Nicholas de Belfont, Global Leader of AI and Generative AI at BCG. Sherry, can you tell us a little bit about Penske? So Penske Transportation Solutions, we think about ourselves as masters of movement. So we help people move things from here to there, from point A to point B. We have a fleet of rental vehicles that people might recognize. They're the yellow trucks you see running up and down the road that households use to move their belongings. That's about 5% of what we do. Mm -hmm. The majority of what we do is supporting B2B businesses behind the scenes. So we offer truck rentals, um, leasing and logistics solutions to fleets. And so because of that, we've developed this expertise and consider ourselves um, a fleet of fleets in the industry. So Sherry, I know that you've seen Penske transform from a conventional transportation services company to a tech-enabled industry leader. So what prompted Penske to initiate the transformation? And um, can you talk a little bit about the journey along the way? It's about 10 years in the making, really this transformation journey, and it really started with our customers. So they had a need for data, they needed to put it to use in their businesses, and they were inviting us to support them in doing that. And we felt like we had this expertise. We run and operate our own fleets, but we also help our customers operate their fleets. So it's understanding our customers' challenges and coming alongside them, and technology was at a place where we could really start to do that. So we started building a data platform, and at the same time, we also built tools to put the data to use. So we needed to get the data in and then have the tools that we could use to get the data back out to our customers. And we started simple. We started small with um, some basic use cases and we've built from there. Nicholas, when you reflect upon uh, Pensy's experience and what they've achieved, how would you compare that to other leading organizations? It starts with a strategic vision, in your case, to get closer to customers, to provide more services to customers. And it starts with an outcome that you're trying to, to achieve. Um, and then, of course, technology is going to be at the service of that. And it's going to be a combination of digital and data and predictive AI and generative AI. And you know, in the next decade, we'll see many more new technologies come disrupt uh, the business world. But it always starts with, uh, uh, with an outcome. Now, of course, at the moment, we see a dramatic acceleration with generative AI that is reopening a lot of, let's say, passion, but also investments. Uh, you know, most companies are significantly increasing their investments in AI and in data in general this year to catch up with the, with the wave. But it is, it is not a 12 months effort that will make the difference. Uh, it is a sustained investment in capabilities, in technology, but also in an organizational change uh, to be more data savvy, to understand the potential of the technology and to you know, put that to, to good use, that makes a, a true difference. So I really think, I mean, to a large extent, you nailed it. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Sherry, how do you see AI transforming uh, fleet management practices in the near future? And also, you know, what are the potential implications for the industry as a whole? So one of the things that our customers struggle with, so fleet managers, is that they have to rely on aggregated benchmarks in our industry. So they have to rely on data that's old, that might not be very precise, and might not be specific to their use case. And what the possibility of AI brings is the opportunity to put um, that data at their fingertips and really to help them see opportunity that they can't see on their own. So I see the potential as really being the possibility of AI and bringing that data to people, but also that human ingenuity in putting it to use and putting it to action. I wanted to ask now specifically about Catalyst AI, which is the um, AI-driven fleet management system that was developed through a partnership between Penske and BCG. So Sherry, can you tell us about the platform, how it works and what challenges it solves and the development process uh, that occurred behind that. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're super excited about Catalyst AI and um, 
It is a platform that helps fleets to draw comparisons. 77% of fleets today rely on these um, aggregated benchmarks. This gives them the ability to create um, a fleet that looks more similar to them. So we're using AI to essentially um, develop a fleet DNA, a fleet fingerprint um, for a fleet, and then allow them to find those that are most like them and draw those comparisons. Um, the process, um, it was, a, it was a lot of work for a team. We had um, an incredible internal team full of different subject matter experts that, are, that bring our expertise to bear, that are really close to how fleets operate day to day and what we know about them, as well as all the data that we have that comes off the vehicles in real time, as well as the data that we have housed within the business. And then we partnered with BCG as well to get some external expertise um, to complement that team. And it was absolutely um, a brilliant team in terms of how they work together. We couldn't be prouder of the speed to market and the process by which that was done and accomplished. Nicholas, um, would you say that Catalyst AI is the type of initiative that other leaders should be trying to emulate? The way we look at value creation, I would say, with digital and AI is in three ways that are complementary. Deployment of AI in day-to-day -day tasks, that's about you know, driving productivity. The second big effort that we see leaders go after is reshaping some of their core internal processes. So looking inwards at you know, how they drive marketing and customer service and supply chain, et cetera, and using digital and AI to make that faster, more efficient, uh, you know, at a higher quality, um, you know, have, driving better decisions on how you allocate your resources. The third one is exactly what Penske is doing, is inventing and, you know, putting on in market new offerings, new products, new services, new customer experiences. And actually, great companies have to balance all of these three elements, but the true leaders are the ones who nail the third one, because this is where you have the highest level of impact, and competitive advantage. Because if you are able to drive superior solutions leveraging your data in the market, you are going to create new barriers to entry, new assets, um, and frankly, greater uh, stickiness from, from your customers. So you are protecting your revenue base also uh, quite well. And Sherry, can we talk about the challenges that you faced, mm. not just on the technology front, but also the people and the organizational front? So. We invited our customers into the development process with us, and so we did some prototyping. And then we showed the customers, um, some of our largest, most significant customers, we showed them an example of what we were trying to do and some prototypes, and we got their feedback and input, and we iterated, and we went back and forth. And so that was a really important element of helping to mitigate risk in the process, get speed to market, but also work through those challenges quickly and iteratively so that it allowed us to take the product to market. So Nicholas, I'm curious to hear if that resonates with you and the work that you've done with other clients and what are some of the typical challenges that you've seen and how does BCG help clients address those challenges? Yes, well, we have a, a formula at BCG, a simple one. Um, when you look at 100% of the effort that has to be put in in order to drive value from, from data and AI, 10% is going to be on the actual algorithms and the calculations. 20% is on the fundamental data technological backbone to you know, fuel all of these algorithms. 70% is on the people side. And that 10, 20, 70 equation is the biggest misunderstanding when it comes uh, to, to, data, to data and AI. People focus too much on the 10 and the 20 and not enough on the, on the 70. And behind that 70, there are many dimensions. One is you need to have the right talent in-house with partners. But if you're working on extremely strategic solutions, you want progressively to internalize that capability because you cannot depend on uh, others for something that is extremely strategic. But there is also a big challenge in user or customer adoption. And adoption is not just I need to train them with a user manual, it is I need to make them part of the co-creation, exactly as uh, Penske did. I need to make sure that I help them change 
their behavior, their ways of working, their processes, how they're going to make decisions. I mean, ultimately, you are bringing them data, insights, predictions in order for them to do something with it. So they have to be taken by the hand to understand what can be done. And this is where, indeed, you know, co-building these solutions with the customers or the users is extremely critical. And it's you know, iterative cycles that takes together all of these, um, all of these components. And what advice can you share um, for different companies and in other industries that are kind of undergoing this transformation? I think if I had a f just a few, the first one would be don't start from technology. Start from strategy, start from outcomes. Technology is at the service of this. It's going to change. It's continuously changing. And we are, of course, seeing an exponential pace of change uh, you know, uh, in, in the technological landscape. So if you're trying to deploy the latest technology, you will always be late. Uh, because fundamentally, the technology changes faster than your ability to, to deploy it. If you start from the outcome, then at least you're, you know where, where, where you are going, and you are going to leverage you know, the best of what technology has to offer to get to that outcome. So that's one. I think the second is focus. Uh, you know, if you are starting 200 small use cases and pilots everywhere, it's going to be very difficult to drive any meaningful value. Uh, and I, you know, I like the, the real clarity of the, the Catalyst AI uh, proposition because it's customer first, very clear set, an understanding of you know, what will drive value for your customers and a few sets of, uh, of priorities behind that. And Sherry, where, where you sit now in, in your journey, in Penske's journey, what do you see in the future as being more challenges and opportunities for AI, it, specifically in your sector, in transportation and logistics? I think it's going to be about um, continuing to demystify the hype from the real possibilities. And you know, a lot of times when we hear about these technologies right now, we become really fixated on that and try to apply that. And that's a bit of a misnomer. This industry is going to continue to become more data centric. It's going to continue to have a need um, for these solutions with AI. We're dealing with millions and millions, billions and billions of data points on a regular basis. And that's a lot for people to put to work and comprehend. So I think in this industry, we're just getting started with the possibilities. I do think we're going to have to get the people part right as well. Um, because again, it's about the people plus the, the technology and the data as we look to the future. Well, thank you so much, Nicholas, and thank you, Sherry, for joining us today. Really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.